Well, it is always delightful to invite Executive Director Capri Maddox of the Civil and Human Rights and Equity Department into our studio. But today we're actually visiting her office. We are in the John Lewis Conference Center and it is so nice to be here. What a great space. You guys moved in recently, did you not? Yes. About a year maybe? Yes, September of 2021, and we wanted to create a space that not only supported our wonderful, hardworking staff, but we wanted to have a space that was welcoming for the community and really worked for our 41 commissioners that serve on our five commissions here at the LA Civil Rights Department. All right, well then let's kind of, let's dig into this a little bit because it's really only been 18 months. I mean, and you know, obviously so much has happened as part of LA Civil Rights. You have the Discrimination Enforcement Unit, which was something that we had talked about a few months ago, you know, getting put into place, but now, you know, it's getting up and rolling. And what are you hearing? And what are some of the cases that are coming in? And what are some of the outcomes you're hoping for? Well, first of all, we want to send a clear message that although we enjoy the carrot, uh, and stick approach. Uh, this is the stick approach to uh, the carrot and stick um, model. And I think making sure that people can be held accountable is something that residents have wanted and justice delayed has been justice denied. But I think it is important to know that we have a number of cases that are coming through. And I'll tell you, to answer the, the, the um, pertinent question here is, we have a number of inquiries that have come in. Over the last uh, about two years, we've had 300 cases, Maria, come in as far as inquiries. A lot of those have been referred out to our state and federal partners, but what we are seeing in the cases that I believe we'll be able to take is discrimination in education at some of our um, local private schools, uh, local private high schools, uh, where underrepresented populations have felt other. In addition, um, again, thinking about the, the rental market, where the discrimination is uh, taking place, uh, particularly as it relates to citizenship um, or even uh, primary language. And so we wanna be intentional to um, protect folks in a number of ways. And the outcomes that we are looking for is to make sure that people are made whole. And I wanna be intentional to say that we have resources uh, to bring cases against folks that violate your civil rights and the penalties can be up to $250,000. And that doesn't preclude residents from seeking justice through a private attorney or another government entity. It's tragic, fascinating, and then with these efforts, hopeful. You would think that we would be past so much because there are laws on the book that protect people when they're inquiring for a rental property or things like that. And it is, it's a little disconcerting to think that those laws have been there, but maybe they have not been enforced. I mean, an organization like this, I would imagine because it's so personal, so one-on-one, -on -one, so accessible, is that giving people the confidence then to reach out and make these inquiries to find out whether they have some sort of claim against somebody? Is, do you think that is helping solve this problem, bridging from law into action? Yes. Maria, people in Los Angeles see us, we are available. And uh, Tom Bradley said, said availability is the best ability and we are making ourselves available to the residents of the city of Los Angeles. Some people, believe it or not, they think that's just the way it is. They think there's, they've been othered so much that they are used to that behavior. And they're thinking, what am I gonna do with this, you know, against me, against a big landlord? Or, you know, what am I gonna do with this employer? Or this is a prestigious private school that I was lucky to get in. I, I better not complain even if I am um, being wronged here. And people need to know their rights. And I think that is why the education component of our operation is 
important. Uh, we have a number of commissioners that are on our Civil Rights Commission that are out in the community providing education for our residents to let them know their rights so they will come forward with a case. There are some things that just seem to rear their ugly heads over and over and over again. And one is that, you know, the subject of hate against others. You know, everything, every time we think we've sort of been okay, then there's another wave of anger and loudness and hate. So how is that affecting what you are doing here? I mean, you know, from the Asian American communities to now the Jewish American communities, I mean, just it's, it doesn't seem to stop. Yeah, there are times, Maria, where I feel like I'm playing hate whack-a-mole, yeah. where we, you know, we make sure we address something that has happened to one community and then something else pops up. And quite frankly, even in City Hall, you know, we had some challenges that we are working through and we are not gonna create a Los Angeles where we're gonna use tapes or how people have been othered um, as an excuse to not do what's right for all communities because representation matters. So it is overwhelming in some regards, but I feel like our staff is empowered because we get a chance to do something about it. There's folks that are sitting at home and they just see it and they're frustrated by it. But we are creating um, a team of people that are able to fight it and use a variety of skills. And I'm so delighted that we serve as the City of Angels. And it's one thing that and throughout, throughout my entire career, I've taken to heart that uh, angels are messengers, right? And we know what happens in Los Angeles has an impact on what happens in the world. And so I am mindful of that every day we come to work here at the LA Civil Rights Department because we wanna be a solution, we wanna be a model. We want to be leaders on what is working and how we can um, shape a better tomorrow, not only for Los Angeles, but for our entire world. And I don't have to tell you, um, it only takes me home watching news for five minutes to realize that we need all the help we can get. Right. But this is just one tiny piece of what LA Civil Rights is doing. I mean, we also had the good opportunity to speak about LA Repair and how infusing some opportunities into communities for them to choose where the needs are and to help build with communities. So how is LA Repair doing? And what is it, just as a tiny refresher? So the LA Repair program um, gives real people real power over real money to determine where resources should go to serve their community. And we couldn't be more grateful to the mayor and city council for granting us $8.5 million to move forward and provide resources for the community. Uh, community members have the ability to participate. It's called participatory budgeting for a reason. They are able to participate in an idea collection phase and to weigh in on how these dollars are spent. Ideas that are coming forward now are childcare, rental assistance, uh, citizenship, assistance and I just think it's beautiful that the community working with our community-based organizations is going to provide services and resources in partnership with the city family. It's a win-win-win and we're a better Los Angeles because of the repair program. Wow, obviously the most important thing people want to learn, you've already mentioned it once before, but let's repeat where people can get information about it happening here. Well, I want people to definitely follow us at LA Civil Rights. That's our social media pages. And I think it's important to be intentional to sign up for our newsletter. And you can do this at civilandhumanrights.lacity.org. And I also want to tell people if you need help, if you feel like hate and discrimination is where it's ugly head in your life in some way, call us. There is no wrong door when it comes to fighting hate and discrimination when it comes to our office. And our phone number is 213-978-1845. Thanks for letting us uh, come into your world for the day. Thank you so much for joining us. And that's a wrap on this LA Current.